Hello everyone and welcome back to Black Dahlia. Last time we got a little bit more information about Elizabeth Short and where she could eventually end up, which is the Biltmore Hotel, but she's not there yet. Detective Maxwell, though, we talked to, and uh, maybe it wasn't a good idea talking to him, but today we have one more place that we didn't check off last time, which is the train station shipping counters. Now, you might be asking yourself why we're actually back here. Well, remember that back on the train, we went about switching the shipping labels on two different packages, which included Wind Winslow's package. This is what we're actually trying to find more information about, because obviously it would only delay Winslow's plans, so eventually it would have wound up here. But who knows? Maybe it's still here, and we still have the upper hand a little bit on Winslow. I'm not entirely sure, though. So we have two counters that we can go to. Let's try this one. May I help you, sir? Alright. Hello! I'm checking on something. Um, would you be able to help me about that? Does all train cargo come through here? It certainly does, sir. Could you tell me if a package came through on today's train from New York? Ah, uh, that would be the province of the receiving clerk, sir. What is it exactly you do here? We ship, sir. Thank you. Come again. Not my area, so I'm not going to help you. You're doing a real fine job here. Oh, why thank you, sir. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the the air that Pearson is putting on, um, this is going to be a general air that is going to be put on for a good half of the video. May I help you, sir? Now, I'm not sure about anybody else, but if you've played Black Dahlia, you know this character. If you've gotten to this point, um... He sticks in your head, let's just say that. Eh, I almost don't want to talk to him, but we have to. We have to go through this. Can you tell me if a package was received here on today's training from New York? Uh, certainly, sir. Your receipt, please. What? Your receipt. I'll be happy to retrieve your package, provided you have the appropriate receipt for said package. Uh, I don't have a receipt. Oh, then I certainly can allow you to sign for it. Regulation number 50073 provides that no cargo... But I don't want to sign for it. I'm afraid I don't quite understand, sir. What is it you wish to do? To see if a package has arrived. Well, how can I possibly see if it's arrived if you don't have the appropriate receipt for said cargo? Well, how do I get a receipt? The shipping clerk at the point of departure should provide the appropriate receipt for all packages received at this point of destination. Oh, perhaps your clerk was a bit negligent. Well, Form 20200 provides a forum for customer dissatisfaction. Forget it. As you wish, sir. Thank you, sir. Come again. I don't know if the developers are just completely self-aware at this point about what they're trying to do, but... Uh, it's laid on very thick with this man. Well, we can't see the package. Let's see the manifests instead. Because they're right there, you know. I'd like to see the shipping manifest, please. Certainly, sir. Thank you. I'll just need to see your receipt first. I need a receipt to see the shipping manifest? Oh, certainly not, sir. You need a receipt to receive your baggage. Regulation number 50072 provides that under no circumstances shall any person... He look, look, I don't have any baggage. Then why would you possibly need to see the shipping manifest? Thank you, sir. Come again. 
And this is a problem having no jurisdiction in any way, shape, or form. I'd like to know if a package has been signed for. Do you have a- Ah, uh, never mind. Okay, so we're getting nowhere here. Uh, nowhere fast. And talking to him is not something we need for our brain to deal with more. Which leads us to, um, one of the more stupid puzzles, I guess would be, bluntly speaking. Uh, we need to get, obviously, a receipt, because that's the only way that the clerk is going to understand anything that we're saying, is if we have a receipt. But we don't have any baggage. Well, there's one thing that has changed in this whole station that we're able to examine, and that is this trash can. It has a box inside. A completely nondescript, unmarked, questionably empty box. The, the, the solution for this, like, the, all the other solutions for most of the other puzzles have involved some sort of thought, but we're, we seem to be backpedaling on the intellectual side of the puzzles. May I help you, sir? Yes, I have a really, really stupid idea that I'm kind of asking you to do at this point. I'd like to ship something. Very well, sir. What is it you would like to ship? Very well, sir. Will that be standard or express? I don't care. What difference does it make? Well, express gets there faster, but at a somewhat greater expense. Okay, this is a really important decision we have to make. Do we want this to get faster? Or because we know exactly what we're doing, we can just go ahead and do the cheaper route? I think standard is easier, and less money, of course. Well, it's not going very far. Better make it standard. Very well, sir. A and its destination? Here. Here? Here. Can't you hear? Very well, sir. That will be 50 cents. Thank you, sir. Come again. And so, we have a receipt for a really dumb thing that we just spent 50 cents on. Um, let's check on the status of our package, because apparently we can do that. Have you shipped my package yet? It is in the system, sir. Do you have any idea when I can pick it up? That would be the province of the receiving clerk, sir. Yeah, my job is done. Get out. <laughs> Good lord. Oh, I guess that, that means we get to meet our favorite man of the day. Oh boy. Yay. Oh, everything's great now. May I help you, sir? Yes, it just so happens that I have this wonderful thing that you seem to only be able to understand. One small cardboard box for 50 cents. Um, pay no attention to the stamp, because, you know, we're, we're a very specific kind of thing. Alright. I'm expecting a package. Do you have a receipt? Yes, I do. Very well, sir. I'll retrieve your package immediately. I am so sorry, sir. This package is not due to arrive until later. W what are you talking about? I just shipped it. 
Precisely, sir. The package must travel through the system in accordance with regulation number 10052. Parcels received and or shipped. But I just shipped it from here. The, the package is right over there. As it clearly states on the receipt for said package, you must please allow two to three weeks for standard delivery. Two to three weeks? If you were in such a hurry, sir, perhaps you should have chosen express delivery. Can't you just walk over there and get it? Certainly not, sir. Regulation number 42609 provides that no employee of the rail yard, sir... Forget it. As you wish, sir. Thank you, sir. Come again. I'll come again when you are not here. Far away. Far away. I am sorry, sir. Your package has not yet cleared through our system. All right. Well, that's the standard route. We also have express that we can also do. Well, I need this right away. Better make it express. Very well, sir. And its uh, destination? Here. 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 Can't you hear? Very well, sir. That will be 75 cents. Thank you, sir. Come again. Very well, sir. That'll be an entirely waste of money. As I show by just how I do that motion of stamping and tossing the box. Yeah, we even get a different receipt as well. The only difference between doing the paths, though... I am sorry, sir. Your package has not yet cleared through our system. ...is that we don't get the crushing internal screaming of Pearson for taking the express route. So, that pretty much means that both of the paths end at this point, and we have to still wait for the package to arrive. Still has to clear through the system, which means that we have to do um, some running around of LA, specifically all three of the destinations that we're able to go to at this point. So, Sunset Arms, Biltmore, the boarding house, we need to go to all three of them in order to then have our package show up. Well, here it is, the poor girl's room. Thank you, Mrs. Underhill. It does give me an excuse to show the additional dialogue for returning to certain locations. Because, honestly, we'd never go to the boarding house again after that first time last video. Maybe Elizabeth Short is over at the boarding... at uh, the Biltmore. Who knows? Well, I know who knows. Ike knows. Jack Erdy knows. She hasn't been in here yet. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Okay. One less place to go. One less place to just pop in, make sure everything is there, nothing stolen, and then we can just head back and deal with our wonderful, wonderful man one last time. Did I mention that this puzzle was absolutely god stupid? May I help you, sir? Give me my package. I am expecting a package. Uh, do you have a receipt? Yes, I do. Very well then. I'll retrieve your package immediately. I will just have to have you sign for this, sir. Let's see who signed for Winslow's crate. Hmm. The ABC Moving Company. 
finally seeing a list. It's the hardest thing that we could possibly do. But yeah, here we go. Thank you, sir. Yeah. All that for a single line of information. Something that we can't actually really do anything immediately with. We know the name of the movie company, but we don't have, a, say, an address or any sort of information to go off of. But we do have the tools in order to get that information. It's called a phone. What phone do we have access to here? Well, it's at the Sunset Arms. Number, please. There we go. We can get a listing from the operator. Do you have a listing for ABC Moving Company? One moment, please. ABC Moving. When you want something moved, it's as simple as ABC. This is Amy speaking. Uh, yeah, I need to check on a cargo your office shipped. I'm sorry, sir. You need to speak to Steve about that. He's on in right now. Oh, um, is there someone else I can speak to? It's somewhat urgent. I'm sorry, sir. Everyone's gone home for the weekend. I was just about to lock up myself. Perhaps you could try again on Monday. All right. Thanks anyway. Number, please. Hmm. Okay. No luck there. Uh, never mind. But we did get some information there, and specifically that it is a Friday, January 10th, today. But even with just calling ABC Moving, getting that listing, we have enough information to go on. It just gives us the location of the moving company, which we can strangely go to, even though it's the weekend. Hmm. Oh, I just noticed this bug. Bug's moving, too. The Ooh. ABC Moving Company was closed. I jimmied the lock and was into their offices in no time. So yeah, we're just gonna break in after hours because nobody's inside and the weekend's there. So, we're breaking in. We need to find out about where the crate was going that the moving company was shipping it to. So, we need to take a look around with our handy dandy flashlight to see what things we are actually able to examine. And the main thing that we're able to look at is this really rambling letter to Amy, the girl that we were actually talking to on the phone from, I believe, the letters from Marge. But it actually goes over the main points of the puzzle that we're going to be doing here, because we need to find a certain file of a shipping receipts and ID numbers that correspond to Winslow's package. And apparently their ID system is um, simple yet complicated at the same time. It involves five different things. One is the initials of the driver of the um, truck that picked it up, the zone that they drive in, whether it's one, two, three, or anything else, the client's initials, or whoever they may be, we don't know yet, as well as the day of the week that they're picking it up, Monday is 1, Friday is 5, they don't work on the weekends, as well as the week of the year. Now, the first page really goes over the first four, but the second page goes over the more intricate details about who works in which zone in terms of the drivers. It's not all that clear who is driving what, and... In all honesty, you can skip a whole lot of the information and see what other things we can actually find as we go through the office. For instance, like, some people, like, really don't like moving in some zones, and some people don't like that they don't get their trucks all the time, and this is general, like, trucker talk and whatnot. But yeah, it's kind of all there. The other thing they kind of mention is that it's annoying that they have a couple drivers with very similar names. So, like, they have an Owen and Owens. But 
But don't worry about it, this puzzle is actually a, a lot easier than initially thought once you get down the actual things you're going to be looking for, and then eventually where we're going to be looking for them once we have the information. So this desk, specifically, has um, something that we're able to piece the information from that letter together with. This is the manifest of all the deliveries that were done throughout the week, and as you can see, a lot of the package IDs are not here, but they give us a few examples of what the package IDs look like. Following the same list that I showed before. So for instance, KG, K. Gravaldi, he drives in zone 2, presumably, and then it goes to... Oh no, zone 3. Yeah, I, I, I. And then Stan Black is SB, followed by 1 being a Monday, which is January 6th, and it's the second week of the year. Because New Year's Day would be the first week. So based on that, we are able to actually go down through the list and see where specifically Winslow's package was sent from. Now, of course, it goes from the week of January 6th to January 10th, and the first packages, of course, are the beginning of the week, so it's the next page that we're actually going to be looking at. And yeah, here we go. All right, and let's see. So we got January 10th here, and it looks like there was only one package that was picked up from Union Station. So that definitely helps out there. From Steve O. Okay. January 10th, and AKP is the client. All right. So based on the information that we have, we have Steve O., which presumably could be the S.O. that's on top of here, because his name is written in four to five different ways on this piece of paper. And based on the package ID that's already provided to us, he likes driving in Zone 1. So we kind of have all the information that we need at this point. S.O. I. A.K.P. Being a Friday, that would be a 5, followed by the second week of the year, so 2. So... Five, two. You don't even actually need the last two numbers in order to finish the puzzle, to be completely honest. Um, given how easy it, they actually make the puzzle um, out to be, except finding where the actual files are is really a big pain because you kind of have to be fumbling in the dark in order to find it. There it is, over in the corner. So, even if you have no idea what you're supposed to be doing with this puzzle, you still have this filing cabinet to go through. I don't even know where to start. Which has three drawers of files filled to the brim and are very messy. All of them have different IDs on them, and you can just freely, freely flip through them as much as you want. No, that's not it. To be honest, you don't actually even get penalized for doing this kind of approach. No, that's not it. And for the solution to the puzzle, you really only need the initials, not even no, the zone. That's not it. At least the client's initials, so AKP. And from no, there, you can actually it. figure out the rest because the game kind of gives it to you and doesn't actually trick you up at this point. But you might be thinking to yourself, okay, if we know the solution already, why am I no, actually just it. like blindly going through all of the different files, making Pearson do just more needless no, work? It. Well, it actually turns out that this puzzle has another Easter egg attached to it. No, that's not it. It's it's weird and obtuse, and not a lot of places document this Easter egg. No, that's not it. But it turns out that if you examine 13 incorrect no, files in this puzzle, the easter egg triggers. Which is a little bit strange. No, that's not it. 
All right. Yes, of course, everything is alphabetical, so if we're looking for SO, it's going to be all the way down here. There we go. But I still have a couple more files in order to pick up, because there's our actual file. Kind of on its own, because it's the only AKP file. So, in this case, you only need really AKP and SO in order to solve the puzzle. No, that's not it. No, that's not it. Should be pretty close. I think that's either 11 or 12. Hello? You know what you're doing? You're driving me crazy. All right, let's try it again. Amateurs. Yeah, a bit of a fourth wall break right there. But yes, we know, we know, Pearson, okay, we're just yanking your chain. So... With that said and done, we just need to go ahead and actually get the file in order to get the information we need to continue on with this lead. Ah, there's the file I need. Yes, finally, after blindly looking through everything. Apparently, it was set to RKO Studios of all places. Ooh, we're diving into Hollywood at this point. Signed by Al King. Or the rap party was the case of champagne. Good cover, I guess. Alright, and with that information, we actually have a good amount in order to continue going. Because once we leave the moving company, we have the movie studio that we're able to go to. Might as well. I don't see why not walking right onto a movie set. Uh, hiya, buddy. Well, where's the latest King Productions film being shot? This is it, stage 10. Oh, thanks, Chief. Hey, wait a minute. It's a closed set. You got a pass? I need to speak to Mr. King. Yeah, you and every other schlep in town. Now, unless you got a pass, take a hike. More dialogue, but it is nice and brisk. Yeah. Our lead has dried up because we are not going to be able to get onto that set without a pass. Hmm. Alright. So we can't dig into Winslow's crate any further because of where it is. The only thing we could do at this point is just check at the Biltmore one more time to see if Elizabeth might have stopped by at this point. Excuse me. Are you Elizabeth Short? Who are you? I was an acquaintance of Captain Collins. Oh, Maddie. Maddie's dead. Yes, I know. I'm sorry, Miss Short. Thanks, mister. And call me Lizzie. Sure, Lizzie. My name's Jim. Did you... Did you know Maddie very well? Not as well as I would have liked. Everybody, uh, everybody makes him out to be a real hero. <laughs> My Maddie, the war hero. Were you a hero, Jim? Oh, uh, I don't know. More than anybody else. Well, how about the hero buys a girl a drink? Sure, Lizzie. Take one bourbon and uh, what do you have? Gin. Gin and gin for the lady. girl could get to like you, Jim. You keep treating her this way. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have found her. Safe and sound. Luckily, Elizabeth Short. Hmm. We have a lot to discuss with her. Especially since Winslow is a little bit behind at this point. Lucky for us. Did Matt send you a black gem when he was stationed in Europe? Matt sent me a lot of things. 
Well, the way that I hear it from Mrs. Underhill is you weren't very shy about showing that gem off. Mrs. Underhill is a cheap gossip. Did he send you a gem? Yeah, he sent it. He knew how to treat a girl like a real lady. You know how to treat a girl like a real lady, Jim? Well, I guess it all depends on which girls you talk to. Can we see it? Can I see the gem Matt sent you? It's someplace safe. Can you take me there? Are you trying to feed a girl a line, Jim? I'm trying to help you. I've got reason to believe that you're in some real danger. Who would want to hurt me? I don't have an enemy in the world. All I got is friends, right, Ike? You said it, Lizzie. A man named Winslow is after that gem of yours. He's killed a lot of people trying to get it. I think he might have been responsible for Matt's death. Maddie? But... But the army said it was an accident. I don't think so. Buy me another drink. Don't you think you've... I said buy me another drink. If you won't, there's plenty of guys in here who will. All right. Another round for us, Ike. Coming right up. This won't help, Lizzie. It helps just fine. Hey, come on, let's get out of here. What for? I don't like it here. Let's go someplace where we can talk in private about Matt and that Jemmy sent you. Maddie? Maddie's dead. What more is there to talk about? I'm sorry, Lizzie. I'm just trying to help. You're too late. Now go away. You're giving me the blues. It's never too late. All right, how, how about, uh, how about tomorrow? Yeah. I think so. Hold on a second. Your name Pearson? Yeah? It's for you. Hello? Pearson, this is Dr. Ramsey, LAPD. Detective Maxwell needs to see you. Uh, I'm kind of busy right now, Detective. Can I wait till tomorrow? Say, uh, how did you know... We found a body. It's been cut up pretty bad. You still there? Pearson? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm still here. I'll be right down to the station now. We're at Manhattan Beach. Manhattan Beach? I'm at the crime scene next to the marina. Hurry your ass over here. I'll be right there. I've got to go, Lizzie. Um, meet me, uh, meet me here tomorrow afternoon. I'll buy you lunch. All right, Jim, I'll meet you. Maybe you ain't so bad after all. Oh, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm worse. You'll just have to get to know me. Story of my life. Every guy I meet seems to turn out to be a louse. I'll see you tomorrow, then. Don't forget. Tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. Can I buy the lady a drink? Mister? You just said the magic words. Damn it. See you next time, everyone, for disc eight.